Hello, this is my presentation on Hidden Figures, which I use as my trade book. The official title of the book is actually Hidden Figures, the American Dream and the Untold Story of the Black Women Mathematicians Who Helped with the Space Race. That title is somewhat of a mouthful, so the book is commonly known just as Hidden Figures. The author is Margaret Lee Shetterly, and I don't know if this is an official genre, but I titled the genre as being historical narrative because the book is based on people that actually lived and events that actually took place. However, it's not biographical or autobiographical in any way. Here's a summary of the four primary characters of the book, Dorothy Vaughn, Mary Jackson, Katherine Johnson, Christine Darden. Dorothy and Katherine both worked as computers at Langley, which is a location in Washington, D.C., which became the start of NASA uh, during the time of the space race. Mary Jackson also was a computer at Langley. The idea of people being computers did seem foreign to me when I first started reading this book. My natural inclination is to think of a computer as just the device that I'm recording this presentation on. However, before computers as we know them became popular, computers were actually people. They were a job position, and computers were those that did a lot of the advanced calculations and kept track of data and did some of the statistical analysis for various high-tech jobs that were necessary. Christine Darden is placed at the bottom because she was younger, one of the younger people in the book. She's not mentioned until later on because she was able to ride the coattails on a lot of the work that Dorothy, Mary, and Catherine did, both as making progress in the workplace for women and also in creating avenues for women to become mathematicians that were integral to NASA and the space race. Here is a summary, but I guess the, a better term would be a synopsis. I realize it's only a paragraph, so I will expand upon it. This book focuses on four African-American women and in their intertwining lives. They all played a part in working at Langley in Washington, D.C. during a time of segregation in America, contributing to NASA and the space race. The book also balances between commentary on the lives of the women, commentary on race in America during the Civil Rights era, and a report of American history during this time period. So when the women are introduced, it's actually before Brown v. Board of Education was passed, it's before the Civil Rights Movement, and so often there's moments of where they face segregation and racism as they are trying to pursue being teachers, and then as they are moving on to working to try and get into working at Langley, getting hired there, they face various narratives about experiencing segregation on the bus, talking about things that I've read about in history where, oh, you know, I know about Rosa Parks and about her sitting in the front of the bus. Well, these women experience sitting in the back of the bus and really kind of seeing the idea of feeling separated from America through their eyes. Also, they went ahead and had to deal with a lot of racism at their workplace, being separated, having colored bathrooms. Even after the passage of civil rights, of the civil rights movement, it didn't really seem as though there was much of a difference in what they did. There's definitely moments uh, where both Dorothy and Catherine make great contributions. Uh, Catherine made a contribution to Project Mercury, which, re uh, which related to uh, the satellite being able to orbit the Earth. And she, she did not really receive any credit at all. A lot of the white scientists that she worked alongside received credit for that achievement. And so that is some of the subtle racism that some of these women had to deal with quite regularly as they were moving through the book. Now, I outlined some of the cons and pros. I started with the cons of how I feel this book may or may not connect to the classroom. And I did not see much examples of specific mathematical ideas that I felt would relate to middle school and high school concepts. I felt like some of the specific mathematical examples were a little beyond what students might be observing. I did see that orbital, orbital satellites could be related to parabolas, but I felt like that would be a stretch. I don't know if I would use that as my main focus of a lesson on parabolas. I might use that as kind of an extra aspect to bring in after teaching the basics of parabolas. However, I do like that this book is a testament of perseverance under adversity. I feel like math is a subject that is often seen as being very difficult to students, being a place where they struggle. And so I would definitely want to recommend this book to women because I feel like there's just always a negative stereotype about women and how they relate to math. 
And I would also want to make sure that this book is available to minorities because I want to, I want them to know that they can succeed even if they're currently facing difficulties or stress, maybe not even in the actual classroom, but just maybe in school or in their life at the moment. Now, would I recommend this book? I would as a general general use. If you notice in my first two bullet points, I, I see that this could be a support to a struggling student, as I just elaborated on. I also think it would be really interesting to do this book as a whole class reading, maybe every Thursday or Friday after students have been working hard for the rest of the week. Uh, we could get this book out and I could even possibly maybe read a chapter. A lot of the chapters are not super long. I really like the way the book is structured and broken up. But I, like I said before, I am uncertain about using this in individual lessons. I don't want to discount that out. I'm always open to seeing connections later on. But right now, I don't think I would use this book for individual lessons. Thank you.